Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. And in this video, we're going to conclude the, um, at least the major books of the Guardians of Gahul series. This is The Rise of a Legend. So this is a prequel book. This came out after the rest of the books were finished. Um, in fact, I think a couple of years afterwards. So, um, like this came out, this came out in 2013. So, this is kind of an interesting story. So this is the story of um, Soren's mentor, who was originally called Leeds. Um, of course, that's not his name in the original series. He is, this is, I don't think I should, um, I don't remember, is he? Elzaba. Elzarobo, but um, he was Lee's in the beginning. That's what he was born. He was born in the Northern Kingdoms. His parents were um, generals in the battling in these armies where they're constantly fighting. He was the, I think, maybe the firstborn. He doesn't have any older siblings. He ends up with a little sister who's killed in a fire um, and they're attacked by again these enemy owls when he's older and she can't fly yet he was very very close to his baby sister um he goes off and becomes a cadet he meets some other owls um he has other friends he falls in love with a nether owl by the name of lil and they do eventually get married he does end up with a baby brother he ends up with a little brother whose name i can't remember because again he doesn't particularly like his little brother and when his little brother is very young, his fa their father dies, um, and his mother becomes very, very depressed. So, and then I believe she ends up fighting. But he, you hear the stories of how he meets um, Olympia, who is the snake that you see in a lot of the earlier books, who is blind, but she was not originally blind. You find out they how they meet, and how he convinces one of the generals who actually listens to him, as opposed to some of the other older owls, to recruit not only these snakes to help in their war, but also um, snow leopards. So it was them who kind of started recruiting some of the other animals to help in their war. And how she has a mission where she goes because um, they can swim. So they go underwater and they go to try to find this enemy general who nobody's been able to find. And she's able to find him to realize they're using another snake to as a food tester. And they cut something in her to basically prevent her from changing the shape of her head, which is something that's vital for them. And so she kills this other snake as assisted suicide <laughs> and then leaves. But she also finds out where the heck he's at. So she's able to get out and get back and tell them where he's at. And eventually they're, um, you also realize that they, um, but peregrine falcons are involved in this and they have their betrayed. So the other um, side knows that they're recruiting these snakes and they're recruiting the snow leopards and they have to find some other secret way to attack. His brother attack and some of his friends attack another owl and they, his brothers uh, teamed up with a, another snake by the name of Greg. Um, this is mentioned in an earlier of the Gahul book, so you know this. You actually kind of know what's, to an extent, what's going on in this story. And then, um, basically, there's a battle. He's, her, the brothers, they damage, I think, prevent this other owl from flying, so they get in trouble. Um, all but his his younger brother is banished, and the only reason his brother isn't banished is because of his their distinguished parents. Um, but he is stripped of his battle claws. They are eventually reinstated because they need everybody else. They need every fighter in this. Um, his brother finds this out. He's not happy about it because he doesn't trust his brother. And they go into battle, and they're fighting, and his brother, who's can flee in kind of nasty helps basically kills his wife he he kills lil he kills his older brother's wife because apparently he was in love with her and he 
wanted to just basically because for some reason, how on earth he fell in love with her? Nobody quite knows. It's never really explained. Because again, he's much younger than his than um, his older brother, and Lil has been in training with Lyle or Lil. Um, can't even pronounce his name, but um, and for many for. I think a couple of seasons here. They're older. They're full-grown owls at this point. Um, so he kills his brother's mate. And um, he, obviously his, he goes kind of crazy, kills this leader because uh, he's just gone nuts. And he basically accuses him, this guy of um, killing his mate because it was his brother who helped basically this happen. So he kills this leader because he's going crazy and then pretty much tries to kill himself. He's rescued because he's partially injured. One of his claws has been damaged. Um, and he's being told, he hears a voice saying, you can survive. And they take him to the the brothers who are the um, healers. And he eventually chews off his claw because, because it's, it's just in pain and it's not healing. And Olympia shows up. She's been blinded. She was attacked by one of the other owls when she wasn't paying attention. And she's completely blind. And she starts taking care of him. And eventually, um, one of his, um, a smith friend of his, a young, a female owl, who's also, she, by the end of this, she's sick of making battle claws. She wants to go make art. Um, I believe eventually she's killed. Um, in the earlier books, but she comes and convinces him. She's gone to the Southern Kingdoms. It's like, I'm, I'm making art. Um, I'm done making battle claws here. And she convinces him along with, um, Olympia to go to Gahul and to teach and to teach about weather because he had been writing. He had, she, um, he's been writing poetry. He's been writing what his, what he knows about weather. And they're like, go teach, not war, but, and as it hintedly, he's teaching about fire and, um, cooking food, which is something else he turned, he learned from another owl. He learned that from the mother of one of his northern owls, how to actually cook food, use fire to, and the coals to cook food. Um, and that's what he does. And so this is his tale. This is very much this back tale where you have this tale of how he he never originally wanted to go to war but he was forced to his father was killed this was the world that he was born into and they killed his sister and they killed his little sister and i think one of their nest made snakes that he was close to so he was not he was pushed into this he wanted to learn about weather he learned he went north and learned about how weather worked he was very interested in that and he was working with how he, how to use cooperation among different species. Um, but again, he didn't originally want to fight war, but he was forced into it. His sister was killed. His father was killed. This was the world he was born into. And you see how he is and how, why, of course, his mate is killed and he's depressed and he doesn't, he hangs up his battle claws like, I'm never fighting again. This is, I don't want to be in war. So he goes into peace and then he's convinced to go teach. So that's really the gist of this book. It's very, very good. It's very, very interesting to see the back uh, of this. And of course, he tells the story because Soren and his friends have arrived. And he sees something in Soren thinking that Soren will be king without an ember. So without some sort of weird declaration that without being born into it that he sees this in Sorn, and this is the reason he mentors him, is because he sees something in him. And of course, at the end of the War of the Ember, that, that's exactly what happens. Um, his nephew, who had the Ember, returned the Ember and committed suicide because he was sick of it. And Sorn becomes king because he is a noble owl. But that's this is the background, and this is the legend again of the rise of a legend. So this is that, this is his story. Very, very good book. Um, great conclusion really to this, uh, this series besides, of course, the 
uh, conclusion of the main story, which is The War of the Emperor, which I've already covered. So that's it for this. There are two more books that I will be covering. Um, you have a guide to Gahul, and then you have a series of short stories. So I will be covering those as well, and then we will be completely done with the Guardians of Gahul. I may cover some of her more. I'm definitely looking into more of her books. She's a very good author. Definitely middle grades, um, late elementary, middle schoolish. So whatever age range that is, I think my if my niece were interested in reading, who she's not, <laughs> she's about ten. She would probably be able to read these and enjoy them. So ten, ten-ish, which is actually a little bit younger, late late middle school, um, or late elementary. She's in I think going into fourth grade. So. That might work with these books. Um, but again, they're also decent read-alouds if you choose. Again, there's battle in here. Again, his mate is killed. His father is killed. Um, depends on your kid so and their maturity level and what you think they can handle. So great conclusion to this. A very, very good series. They're very, very enjoyable. So unfortunately, they're only available in ebook form. I have the physical copies from my library. If you can find them used, I do so. But Scholastic doesn't physically print them anymore. And that's the publisher. So you can find them in ebook, which, yeah, I have my opinions. <laughs> I don't like this. Um, in fact, the copy that I have here is falling apart. I have a cat falling out of my lap. How it go? So that is it for this video. If you like what you see, be sure to check out the rest of the channel. Again, I've covered I'm, uh, all of the Gahool books. Um, I'll be covering the last two, the two little kind of side books as well. Um, I've covered some Tapora Pierce. I've covered, as of this reading, um, quite her uh, three, four of her main series, her uh, Circle of Magic quartets, both uh, the Circle of Magic and the Circle Opens, as well as the Will of the Empress. I've covered the Song of the Lioness and the... Um, the Immortals Quartet. So those have been covered. I will cover um, her last two major quartets at some point. They're not in the works as of right now, maybe next year. So we're looking at that. This is being filmed in 2022, in fact, the end of this, um, end of November of 2022, if you know where I'm, so you know kind of where these things are being filmed. So the year that you were watching this in, uh, as of right now, I'm still planning. <laughs> <laughs> We're still planning that. We're still getting there. So I've also covered the Princess Diaries this year, if you want to check those out. The other major series that I've covered is the very, very dark series of The um, Last Apprentice, which is um, Joseph Delaney. Very, very dark. I've also covered the first series that I covered, uh, besides the Circle of Magic Quartet, was um, the Ranger's Apprentice series. So... Um, be sure to check those out. I also do quite a few single books, different themed books for different times of the year, uh, various different films, both fun, educational. I do some YouTube um, reviews of YouTube videos and occasionally reviews of uh, other educational channels, uh, as well as some travel videos. So when we get when we travel, I kind of talk about that just a little bit, as well as some attractions in my local area and when we travel. So I talk about those specifically as well. So, and of course, my daughter, we are secular homeschoolers. So as we start doing curriculum stuff or different things, I'll review those on this channel. As of right now, again, this is 2022. My daughter is a little over two and a half. <laughs> so coming by the time you guys see this, we'll slowly be getting there. She'll be about three and a half. So we'll be looking into some of that stuff. So I'll review it when I, when we get through it. So that is it. Uh, like, and subscribe, leave a positive comment if you have one and look forward to more videos. Thank you.